In this video, we are going to have a look at the topic of bivariate statistics. Now, this is a very important concept in IB Maths, as it appears in pretty much every single uh, IB Maths exam. So, bivariate statistics looks at the relationship of two different variables. And in the example here, we have some business selling ice creams, and we want to see if there's a relationship here or some trend that's happening where the number of ice creams they sell depends on the temperature. And this is, this is a classic example of two variables which do typically depend on each other because when it's cold, ice creams aren't very popular. People might opt for a hot chocolate or a coffee, but when the temperature increases and it gets quite hot, ice creams are definitely more popular. So I have our data here and our temperature is in degrees Celsius on our uh, horizontal axes and the number of ice creams is on the vertical axes. And I've plotted my points here. And what this topic wants to look at uh, is we want to see if we can fit a line of, a line of best fit or a linear regression. And that's a word that you might see, a linear regression, which just means a straight line which best fits our data. So if I were to just, just approximate a best line, I'll draw this in here. It would look something probably like this here. It won't be perfect, but this would be our, our line of best fit. And the reason why we like to do this is because if we do have a line of best fit, we can then predict, predict values uh, from data that we don't actually have in our original data set. So if we have this line of best fit, and we know that tomorrow's forecast temperature is, is 17 degrees. Well, in this data, there hasn't been a day that was 17 degrees before. But what we can do is we can, we can get an idea of how many ice creams we may sell if it was 17 degrees from the data that we've already had. And the closer these dots are, our data points to our line of best fit, the stronger and, and, the, and the more confident we are with this approximation. So that's what we want to do and we want to try and fit a line of best fit and we want to come up with the equation of this straight line such that we can then predict uh, values. So let's get our calculator out. This is how we do it. We want to uh, have our variables in here. So I have T for my temperature with all of my temperatures here and N for my number of ice creams. And then if you have this calculator, the T I inspire, you can go to menu, statistics, stat calculations, and we're looking for linear regression. So we can choose either MX plus B or A plus BX. I like to use this one here, MX plus B, because this is, this is the equation of a straight line that we're used to seeing, MX plus C, Y equals MX plus C. So if we click on this, our X list stands for our, our X variable, which in this case is T. So you might need to scroll down and find T and our Y list will be the N, the number of ice creams. Okay, and what then comes out is all of our information. We have a regression equation, MX plus B, where M is 1.57 and B is 17.14. So I'll put, I'll put all of this in. Uh, M is 1.57. So M equals 1.57, our B, our B value was 17.1, our R squared, and I'll explain what that means, is 0 0.909, so 0 0.909, our R, our uh, R we can find 0 0.95. I'll just use 0 0.95 for now. Okay, so these are the key bits of information that we need for this topic. So M stands for the gradient of our line. Uh, so we know that we have a gradient here, a slope of 1.57, and that will have a meaning in a lot of these questions. And our B value is our y-intercept, which our original drawing was pretty good, 17.1. This looks to be about 17.1. So our, our linear regression line here will be, it will be N equals, so Y equals, but in this case it's N, our gradient, so 1.57 
times x, which will be our, actually our t variable, and then plus 17.1. So this will be our linear regression uh, equation. And this is, this is very important because then if I say, well, what, what, how many ice creams will we sell? N, uh, if the temperature was 17 degrees, like I said earlier, well, even though we've had no day before where the average temperature was 17, we can just sub 17 into this value for T. And what that is doing is it will, it will find the corresponding N value, the number of ice creams, which is, which is really nice. It, it gives us an approximation. Now, a few key words is if we want to do that, sub in a T value, which is within our known boundary. So our known boundary will be temperatures from 10 to our max 35. That is called interpolation. Interpolation. So if you see, if you, if you see or hear the word interpolation, it means you're going to be uh, predicting the, uh, the N number of ice creams when I give you a temperature which was in within our known data. And that's that's completely fine to do. But if we if I say how many ice creams do we sell if the temperature was 50 degrees, so over here at 50 degrees, that's called extrapolation. So interpolation is within the known data. Extrapolation is outside the known data. And extrapolations, uh, it's a little bit frowned upon because it's it's in unknown territory. It's not as simple as just extending this line on because if it was 50 degrees, uh, then something might happen. It might be too hot that nobody goes outside and therefore the number of ice creams didn't continue this trend. It was so hot that the ice cream store had to actually close down for the day because no one no one came. So extrapolation is a bit of a dangerous dangerous thing. And if you, if you see an economist that likes to ex extrapolate data out of a, of a share price or or something that's a bit unknown. It's a little bit of a, a guess, I, I, I guess. Okay, now what I've the diagram over here just shows uh, some different types of data and the words that are associated with them. So if we have our dots, which all seem to be following a line like here, and it's going up. So when one variable goes up, the other variable goes up. It'll be strong and positive. The strong means it's close to the line and the positive means they're both variables follow each other. This would be a strong negative because it, it is strong. Uh, it's all close to the line, uh, but it's going down. A weak positive is spread out data, but it does seem to be trending upwards a little bit. So it'd be weak and positive. Uh, weak and negative would be this one here where it is trending down, but pretty weak. And the moderate one, the negative here is, eh, there's a bit of a trend there. It's not a not a clear trend, so you don't want to predict too many things off this type of trend. And no correlation is actually very, very common. If I were to say to you, uh, the number of sandwiches sold with temperature, uh, there, there wouldn't be much correlation there because sandwiches don't really depend on the, on the temperature. Now, each of these will have an R value. R value is the correlation coefficient. So this is this value here, R. The R value is very, very uh, popular and it's commonly asked in IB questions. The R value ranges between negative one to one. Uh, if it's in the negative zone, so if R is between zero and negative one, it means it has a negative correlation. So it would be this one here, uh, this one here and this one here. And the closer it is to the extreme, negative one, the stronger it is. So this might have an R value of negative 0.9. This might be R is negative 0.6. So it's getting a little bit weaker. And this one would be negative 0.2 maybe. And if it's in the positive zone, if, if R is positive, it's trending upwards. And the stronger it is, the closer it is to one, which is why with our example, we had a positive R value of 0.95. Now, R squared is, is used often just to demonstrate how strong it is. So they square the R value. And what that pretty much is doing is it, it doesn't really care. We don't care that it might be trending down or it's trending up. We don't care if it's negative or positive. If we square all of our R values, it'll turn them all positive. And then we can just compare the strength of our model, irrespective if it's positive or negative. So that's why uh, in often mathematics assignments, you'll get asked to 
talk about the R squared value of your data, uh, whether it's a, a strong correlation. Okay, so these questions are typically pretty similar. Uh, so if you practice a few IB questions, what you'll need to find is the equation of our line, which is our linear regression. We can do that always with our calculator. They may ask you an interpolation question. So find N when T is 17 or T is 32. If they say find N when T is 50 degrees, you need to be careful and say, well, this is extrapolation. Uh, it would just be a guess. Uh, and uh, we need to find R and maybe discuss what R is. Okay, uh, I encourage you to try a few questions on this topic. Good luck.